In this video, I'll talk through how I built this three-tiered dumbbell weight rack. Check it out. All right, bear with me here. I did a couple vertical videos for my Instagram. Uh, if you're not already following me there, uh, you can check out my Instagram at taylorgraphio 24 seven. Uh, that should be in the comments as well or in the notes to this video. But first step is to unload, unload my trunk. And then uh, here I'm just refilling my glue. So this project, I'm using quite a bit of tight bond, just using the original, this weight rack will be inside. Uh, this is for a local personal trainer. So it will be absolutely fine with this original tight bond, but it's a little bit cheaper to buy it in the gallon size and then just break it down into a smaller container. So if you have the space, I recommend that, or if you're at least going to use it, the glue doesn't really expire too much as long as you're storing it at a semi-normal temperature. Uh, people say it lasts longer if you store it refrigerated, but I don't want this in my fridge. But <laughs> anyway, I won't bore you with all the, the cutting of the two by fours, the majority of this is made out of two by fours. I put a 30 degree angle, which is going to be the angle for the shelves. Uh, so here I'm just sanding all the two by fours and the sides here as well. Um, using uh, just your basic construction two by four. Uh, luckily, Home Depot had some pretty straight ones. If not, you'd want to bump up to a select uh, pine material. You can really use whatever you want, but filling in some cracks there with star bond uh, and sort of half jokingly I, I stacked up six two by fours and cut them all at the same time. I don't recommend this. Uh, definitely not the safest way to cut uh, wood but it is showing that the capacity of my cobalt miter saw is pretty substantial. So just did this for sort of a, a laugh on social media but it would definitely be quicker to do it one at a time even. That took way too long to, to measure everything here. So getting back to a uh, horizontal camera now, sorry about that. Uh, did a little test here with one of the sides. Uh, it worked. So I have both sides set up, sort of spacing things out to visualize where I'm at. I use glue and screws on these. I want it to be as strong as possible because it will be supporting 1,200 pounds. So reinforcing these cross beams with pocket hole screws. So if you're not familiar, the Craig jig here, the blue thing on the ground, is can be bought at any big box store or online. Uh, makes these pocket holes really easy. You can see I have a little shop vac hooked up to it, which helps with dust collection. That way you're not left with a giant pile of sawdust at the end. Once that's done, I'm going to connect these again using this tight bond glue and screws. So Craig has a specific template on their website that shows you what length screws and what depth to set your Craig jig at for different thickness materials. So check that out. Depending on what thickness material you're using, Craig will tell you exactly how to do it. So here we are with almost all of them. The first two rows here, I did three two by fours across and just wanted to make sure it was as strong as possible because again, uh, it's total 1,200 pounds in dumbbells. It's a free weight dumbbell rack. Hadn't seen anything else on YouTube that did a three tier one. So figured uh, I would sort of go based on a couple other videos I saw of two tiered ones, but wanted to make it extra strong. So you can see the overkill here on the clamps. I put an extra support beam here that's being glued with all these clamps are holding. Uh, it's just glued, not screwed. Glue would be plenty strong and that's drying now so it takes around 45 minutes that's what they say to glue it but here's the face frame or what's going to act as the face of the actual set or weight rack here i'm just doing a 1 8 round over on everything it'll save me some time from sanding and give it a smooth edge so it's not going to chip out or anything this will eventually be painted uh, at the end so it won't be too important that any of the blemishes get sanded out but I want to make sure it's easy as possible. So once that extra support is put in, I am putting in the rest of the two by four cross beam supports. Again, glue <laughs> right in front of the camera. Thought I'd leave this in here because sometimes I just forget I'm recording. So gluing and screwing all of these supports in, uh, just making sure everything is flush because there will be a quarter inch piece of plywood as the actual shelf on top of this. So I want everything to be flush. 
and it really worked out nicely. Again, never really made anything like this. I'm not following plans, sort of just in my head, making it up as I go along, uh, making sure everything is square and semi-evenly spaced out. Doesn't matter too much since it's going to be hidden by the plywood, but just want to make sure it's providing as much support as possible, especially on these this lower shelf is going to be these higher dumbbells. This this will support a uh, five pound dumbbell. It's going to be five through 75 pounds. There's two of each. So that's where I get the 1,200 pounds from. But the glue is probably overkill and not necessarily necessary, but it does help. Um, there's my wife checking on me. Um, but definitely recommend using the clamps, using as, as much other support as possible. So nothing's jumping around on you when you drill these screws. Next, I'm cutting the, this is actually one by three material or one by four that I'm cutting down to the width I need. This is going to be sort of the face frame to make it look a little bit pretty and hide some of the end grain there. And I'm actually going to plane part of it down later, but I'll get back to that. So here I am gluing a uh, little brush I use is just a silicone brush. Uh, you could just use your finger, but I had this brush and I'm going to be using a lot of glue. So using that. So this is the face frame I had sort of mentioned. I just ripped on the table saw to the appropriate width and all the clamps. So if you have them, use them. Why the heck not? Um, now here's the quarter inch plywood. So this is a Baltic birch hardwood plywood that's going to as, act as the shelves. You can see I have the first shelf just laid on there. I will glue it after this, but cutting everything to the right size. And I'm going to put a bunch of more glue on there so it doesn't move at all. And I'm just using the miter saw to get it to the right length there. If you do go any wider than what I went, um, you're going to want to add a middle support, I think. I'm not sure how much more weight this could handle. Once I got it to the client's house, it was pretty solid. Uh, it kind of gets top heavy if you're only putting weights on the top. Just be wary. Um, I, I sat on this thing and jumped around. It was really solid, so I'm pretty confident about it. But... Here we go, more glue. Uh, I'm going on the top of all of the two by fours. This time I'm using a little paint roller. It's sort of like a foam brush roller uh, to help speed things up because it's just so much glue. Uh, again, a little bit of overkill, but better safe than sorry. So lay the glue down and then I'm putting the quarter inch plywood on there. Lots more clamps. I, I go back later. I'm not sure if I even showed in this video, but I, I put weights on that as well. You can see these two by four cutoffs helping me clamp it down. Uh, I definitely want the it, it all to be making contact and dry to the two by fours. So definitely go as heavy as you can on the clamps, as many as possible. I'm very thankful that I, I have as many as I do. So now we're seeing the complete extent of the overkill on the clamps, but again, rather safe than sorry. If you have them, use them. Uh, now we're jumping back to the face frame. This is a thickness planer. Uh, it's a benchtop one that DeWalt sells. And I'm planing down this one by material, which if you know one by anything is typically three quarters of an inch thick. I need it to be a half inch to match the thickness of the half inch plywood I use as the shelves. I think I might've said quarter inch earlier, but it's actually a half inch Baltic birch plywood I use for the shelves. I want this to be the same thickness because it's going to be on either side and the front. I don't want there to be any kind of uh, reveal or step up. I, I want it to be really seamless, especially once I, I paint everything. So basically just run this through to sh like shallow passes or light passes so you get to the right thickness and then you guessed it, more glue. So I'm gluing it. I don't want to put any nails or screws or anything in this uh, to, to be as clean looking as possible. I hit the angle there with the same exact angle as I did in the beginning of the video. It's 30 degrees for mine specifically. You could go a little steeper or, steeper or uh, less severe if you'd like, but glue will do the trick. This will stay here forever. There's, even if you try to get this off, it really would be difficult to take off if you if you try to pry it off. But this is just going to get normal use. Um, it's a local uh, personal trainer, and we're going to be using this every day. So, again, as many clamps as you got, use them, and here's the finished product. Uh, you can see the edges there. I, I, I wound up sanding them. A little, there was a little bit of an overhang, but sanding them got it looked really clean. Um, really happy with the way this turned out. 
Uh, I made a couple signs for this customer and they wanted it painted as well. So they have a couple other pieces of equipment in their home gym that they personally train out of that is black. So I'm using a matte black paint and running it through a Graco paint sprayer. Uh, first, I got to set up my little spray booth, which is just a bunch of drop cloths, tarps. I'm protecting everything expensive, uh, including the wood. Uh, thank goodness lumber prices are finally coming down, but I basically just drape this over everything. There's probably a more efficient way to do this coming later down the road as my shop develops, but uh, then I'm just off camera here mixing up the paint, loading the paint sprayer, and now we run through and paint it. I used a, I think it was a seven setting on this sprayer. This is the VSP version of the Graco paint sprayer grabbed from Home Depot and spraying this matte black paint. I want to get every angle possible. I definitely recommend using eye protection and hearing protection so you're not breathing anything in or getting it on you where you shouldn't. But here it is, one coat. Uh, it looks kind of shiny because the lighting is pretty bright in my garage, uh, thankfully, but it does dry matte. Uh, I almost left it with one coat because it turned out really well, but when I did two coats just in case, and I added the stencil here, feed the body, train the mind, follow the spirit, and a couple plaques on the bottom. But here's what it looks like in the client's home. They sort of have it half loaded up with the dumbbells, uh, but turned out really good. Thank you so much for watching and following along with my woodworking journey. If you're not already, please subscribe and God bless.